finally introduce uh, Andreas Makris, uh, who is uh, leading breast cancer research at the Mount Vernon Cancer Center uh, in the UK. He is a true European, and I'm not going to make any comments on the Brexit story, and I think he won't either. Um, but he's going to tell us something very interesting, because for many of us um, in continental Europe, put, let's put it that way, NICE is a role model for the better or worse of how a healthcare system makes its decision. And I think uh, with today's subject, uh, you have some interesting news to tell us. Andreas, thanks yeah. for being here. Thank you, Michael. Can I thank you all for choosing to forego your five course lunch outside for a, a lunch in a packet uh, at this, uh, during this lunch period. I'd like to thank uh, the Nanostring for inviting me to come to this beautiful city of Vienna and for a couple of days forego all the arguments in London about Brexit. And that's the last time I mentioned it. <laughs> so. Can we change the... So I'll be discussing uh, Prosigna in the UK, particularly nice uh, recommendations and, the, and also touch on the optimal trial that I'm involved in the UK. Um, this is my financial disclosures. So the, I'll be discussing first of all how to determine prognosis in early breast cancer, though the, this uh, audience is clearly familiar with that, about Prosigna availability in the UK and the NICE guidance about some of the data with regards to the genomic text head-to-head uh, -head within the trans attack study. I'll talk about the prospective optimal study in node positive patients, touch on some other prospective studies, and then reach my own conclusions at the end. So the, um, as a result of the Oxford overviews that were done in the 1980s and 90s, it became apparent that there was benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy for all patients, although the uh, absolute benefits were small, but there was this, this similar um, relative reductions for all patients. And the 2000 NIH consensus conference came up with the statement that adjuvant chemotherapy should be recommended to most women with primary breast cancers larger than a centimeter in diameter, regardless of nodal status, menopause, or hormone receptor status. And uh, this led to a golden age of overtreatment that lasted for about 15 years until the advent of the genomic assays. So the determining prognosis, we're all familiar with conventional factors, like the tumor size, node status, grade, added to those, the factors by IHC. And the, the first attempt at putting these together to give a, a prognosis for patients was the, uh, the first generation of integrated indices, such as the Nottingham Prognostic Index, um, the adjuvant line, which was widely used until uh, and developed by Peter Raft in San Antonio, but is no longer available. And in the UK, uh, the PREDICT program developed by Cambridge is, is widely used. And I understand that there uh, is also used outside the UK now. And uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, patients' predictions have been done using PREDICT. And then the, the uh, new uh, kids on the block, of course, are the genomic assays. And there are multiple of those and we'll discuss some of these. Um, the, the, uh, Bent has already uh, discussed this about the, uh, the, uh, based on the overview analysis that clearly the uh, relative risks are the same uh, for all patients uh, based on conventional factors, but uh, the, the absolute benefit is small uh, for patients with a distant recurrence uh, of, of less than 10%. And this was a cutoff that was used by many uh, groups in the development of their genomic assays. So the uh, Prosigna has been look, uh, looked at and evaluated by multiple uh, uh, guideline producing uh, groups, and uh, including St. Gallen, NCCN, AGO, ESMO uh, guidelines, and they all support the use of Prosigna as well as other genomic assays, in, particularly for the patients with node negative disease, ER positive, HER2 negative. The development of Prosigna is based on a, a lot of data, and we do not need to some of it has been discussed already. Uh, clearly, the prognostic ability of this test has been shown in multiple studies, and uh, you've heard some from the Danish group, and, uh, and there's also uh, data from neoadjuvant studies which show the uh, prediction of response to chemotherapy based on that. Clinical utility, uh, there is a, a great study from Norway, which is a cohort study capturing the majority of the population over a three-year period, showing the, the value of the test in, uh, there. 
There have been multiple decision impact studies uh, which are really important because these really show that when you receive a result of a ProSigma test, will you then change your treatment based on this? And, uh, and clearly this has been the case and, uh, for in multiple uh, impact studies. And these have been done across multiple healthcare systems and it's not just uh, um, in, in one or two systems. And then um, the UK prospective trial look at, uh, Optima looking at the not positive population. Now the NICE, uh, first of all, NICE was set up uh, 10, 15 years ago with the aim of uh, helping uh, the UK NHS uh, to make decisions, cost-effective decisions about uh, treatments. And uh, so that treatments which are cost-effective, they will be widely available, and treatments which are not effective, they will not be used. When NICE first uh, uh, started evaluating treatments, they were uh, very restrictive in what they were uh, uh, producing uh, as guidance and uh, because there was not much money put into healthcare. But as the uh, NICE has matured, more money has gone into healthcare, the decisions they're reaching are more in line with what clinicians treating those uh, uh, diseases would, would want. So the NICE guidance for uh, tumor profiling in early breast cancer, uh, looking at the ER positive HER2 negative population, it took about a year to develop. And, uh, and what they have recommended is that a ProSigna endopredict and Oncotype DX to be used in the ER positive, HER2 negative, no negative population. But this to be done in an intermediate risk uh, category for distant recurrence based on a validated tool. And in the UK, what is used is the NPI or, or, or the, uh, the uh, PREDICT program. And the, uh, the test is, uh, is being, uh, developed, uh, it recommended for making a decision whether to use adjuvant chemotherapy in addition to the uh, endocrine therapy. And uh, the, the companies all agreed that they will provide uh, uh, results afterwards to the data that they, on a national basis that has been uh, collected. Importantly, uh, NICE also agreed to the, uh, these tests in patients with micrometastasis uh, and, uh, um, and given that they have been conservative in their guidance in the past, uh, th this was important because they said that uh, many of the patients with micrometastasis in the older trials that went on to inform the genomic assays, they would have been called node negative uh, and because some preceded the era of center node biopsy. They did not recommend mama print due to lack of cost effectiveness. And they also, they did not recommend IHC4 uh, on the, uh, due to issue of analytical validity and reproducibility. So the, um, the, the document, the nice document, is, is a, a large uh, document. Uh, and, uh, and I'm just picking up one of the analyses that they did, uh, the nice uh, group. And this is table one, two, four. So that in itself tells you how big a document it is. And uh, it's looking at the 10-year uh, distant recurrence based on uh, the, the uh, four of the tests, Oncotype, ProSigna, IHC4, and uh, EndoPredict. And what we're looking at uh, here, and uh, what I've highlighted, no, first of all, the node-negative uh, population, and uh, the, uh, based on uh, an MPI more than 3.4. This is the, the cutoff point at which NICE recommended the, the assays in the UK population. And uh, if we're looking at the, um, what in the with uh, ProSigna, in, that, in the low risk population by ProSigna, there's a, a 10 year um, recurrence of 7.7%, uh, which is uh, numerically uh, half of what, the, of what it is for the endopredict and oncotype. And similarly, for the, uh, uh, for the high risk group, uh, the, uh, the ProSigna picks out a, a greater number uh, uh, than the others, but the difference is not as ba big as with the low risk group. So the, um, as regards direct comparisons of these assays, the best uh, data comes from that presented by Ivana Sestak and, uh, and now published in, in JAMA. And this is looking at the TransAttack uh, 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 trial. Uh, attack trial started about 15 uh, years ago, comparing uh, tamoxifen with anastrozole, and that uh, showed a, a, a superiority for anastrozole, and that led us to the widespread use of uh, anastrozole uh, in, in uh, postmenopausal women with early breast cancer. And in this study, they, uh, they went back and they compared uh, a, a number of, uh, 
of platforms, including uh, ProSigna, Oncotype, uh, Endopredict, BCI, as well as IHC4. And, uh, and what uh, uh, the, the patients within the, um, uh, the, the study, uh, uh, they, obviously they're all postmenopausal, the, the majority were grade two and uh, three, and uh, there, there was uh, a, a, a data going up to 10 years. So what the, uh, the, this study has shown is that if you're starting off with the nodal status, grade, tumor size, age, treatment, CTS score, which is given, what more information do you get by adding the genomic uh, assays or IHC4? And all of them, uh, in uh, looking at the non-negative population, all of them gave you more information. But, for, but for, if you compare the extra information that is given, uh, the um, ROR ProSigna score gave the, the, the most extra information. In note positive, uh, similarly, there was extra information, but it was, uh, although significant, it was weaker than for node uh, negative disease. Now, the, uh, again, looking at the transit tag data, uh, and this is from uh, Ivana Sestak's presentation at San Antonio from uh, two years ago. And uh, if we're looking at the uh, patients, um, at the, first of all, on, on the no negative patients, what you can see is that the, um, with the low score by uh, uh, ProSigna is, is picking up a lower, uh, a smaller number of patients uh, recurring at, uh, at 10 years, 3% as opposed to um, uh, to 6% by, by um, the oncotype. And, uh, and similarly, for the, uh, the looking at distant recurrence at 10 years for node positive uh, populations. And uh, this has now been published, as I say, in JAMA, and it is showing the, the extra benefit of using genomic signatures and, uh, for the, uh, in addition to the conventional factors uh, based on a population of patients who. Uh, received endocrine therapy and largely did not receive uh, chemotherapy. And, uh, and, the, and the ROR ProSigna gave the most prognostic information within that, that, that subset. So if we uh, go on to the Optima trial, as we know, uh, what we discussed is that clearly there is a, a good evidence for the wide use of, 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 uh, of these signatures in node negative populations. But what we wanted to do is to look at the node positive population and how well do these signatures perform in the, uh, uh, in the node positive population. We started off with a, a pilot study with 400 patients, and this was required for us by the, uh, the sponsors of the study in order to help us to choose which is the best assay uh, for us to take forward. And they also wanted us to show that in a node positive population, patients and physicians are prepared to accept the randomization uh, results. So the, uh, what we, in, the, um, in the pilot study, we randomized patients on the basis of oncotype, but we did six assays, and, uh, and what we were able to show is, uh, is that uh, it was clearly acceptable to patients to have uh, uh, the uh, randomization based on the genomic assay. But based on the analysis then we did of multiple assays, uh, uh, we chose to go with ProSigna for the main study uh, based on the uh, economic modeling that, that we had done. And uh, the, um, there's a, a, an email address there for the Optima uh, uh, the, uh, uh, trial office in Warwick and uh, anybody who's interested in your own countries to take part, please contact either the Optima office in Warwick or please talk to me afterwards, or if you want, email me afterwards. So the Optima main trial, this is, um, this is the design, and the patients are randomized between the, the, the control arm, which is chemotherapy plus endocrine therapy, while in the, um, in the, uh, in the control arm, patients have ProSigna, high score, you get chemotherapy, low score, you do not get chemotherapy, you get endocrine therapy. It's based on a non-inferiority of 3% difference, and we want a, a 4,500 patient uh, population with a recruitment uh, period of four years. And so far, the, it's open in um, 93 uh, centers in the UK and one in Norway. More centers will, are opening in Norway, and we have a, a total of uh, 1,348 patients already. And within the preliminary, the pilot study, all of those 412 patients have been followed for at least five years. 
And uh, so for completeness, uh, the, the other study that you will be familiar with, that uh, for no positive patients, is the completed uh, American study, a responder, where patients, uh, the decision uh, was made on the basis of oncotype. The difference between the Optima and Responder is that in, op in Responder, it was up to three nodes positive, while in the Optima, we go up to nine nodes positive. Additionally, the, uh, in the premenopausal women, the, uh, for uh, patients in uh, Responder, they, the choice of endocrine therapy was based on a, a choice of clinician. In Optima, we mandated for everybody to have ovarian ablation so that we, we don't have the confounding effect of chemotherapy uh, causing ovarian uh, um, uh, suppression in the premenopausal patients. And, um, and then for also completeness, you heard already the, this morning from Boon Chua, the, um, the study from Australia, ANZ 1601, where Prosigna is used in order to uh, guide the decision for use of radiotherapy uh, uh, um, in, in patients with early breast cancer. So, to conclude, um, the NICE have recommended Prosigna, uh, as well as uh, Oncotype and uh, Endopredict, for no negative patients at intermediate risk and uh, as a cost-effective test, but they also importantly uh, included uh, patients with micrometastases. We feel that the design of Optima is a gold standard approach for the test clinical utility and effectiveness of a test. We chose to go with the Prosigna within the Op Optima main trial. We feel that Optima will provide level 1A evidence for the benefit of test-directed treatment. And the Optima population is a high-risk uh, patient, uh, primarily uh, node 1 and node 2, and, uh, and is more likely to pr uh, generate convincing evidence for the clinical utility of an assay uh, in, in, where it is most needed, those patients with the highest risk of recurrence. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas, and thanks to all the faculty for the discipline that actually enabled us to catch up with uh, all the time after the late start. Um, um, maybe a quick question, Andreas. Now there are three tests available in the UK. How are they used? Or how would you use them? Yep. I mean, it, we're not usually in a situation where we have options and choices in the UK, and but it's like, what well, do we have an expression in London about London buses? You wait for one, and then 10 come at the same time. Can they? So it, we have three, and every, every clinician is able to choose any one of the three. Can they? And, uh, and, they, they, and they will make different arrangements, different clinicians and centers. The, um, for Prosigna, it will be done in the UK. It will not be uh, sent outside the UK. And uh, a number of centers in the UK, cent uh, laboratories, will, has been set up in order to provide the test. OK. No, microphone one. Dan Hayes. Hi, Dan. Can we have uh, energy on microphone one? Good. I, the, I'm Dan Hayes, University of Michigan. I just want to make a point to everybody. There are now several assays that roughly do the same thing that are approved in many countries. I believe that it's very important that you not order two assays on the same patient. I would yeah. strongly urge you to pick one you like and stick with that. And because if you start ordering two tests on the same patient, I guarantee you'll have patients with two different results. And don't call me if you do, because I'm not going to know what to do either. So uh, great talk, but just yeah. use one assay that you like and stick with it. Yeah. Thanks, Dad, for that. And if somebody in the UK said to me that if we do two tests on the same patient, you get different results, then you have to do a third one and choose for two instead of one. I wouldn't advocate that, and I agree that we stick to one test per patient. Yeah. Okay, and really quick, what's the turnaround time? For the um, we, uh, the, the, for Prosigna, it's currently being set up in the UK, but within the trial, we're getting turnaround about a week for most patients and two weeks the most. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much.